Before I start this video, I just want to say that this video is for you, so all the media that is used is used for criticism, review, or in a transformative way. And all the information I use is public information, and everything else is alleged or my opinion. So today we're going to be talking about Johnny Depp, because I'm a little bit mad. I'm also a bit cold. I'm sorry for like these weird shadows on my face. I draw on my window. Fuck, I just looked into the sun. I draw on my window, so now all of my weird doodles are like showing up on my face. For those of you who don't know, basically a few years ago this actress called Amber Heard accused her then husband Johnny Depp of abusing her. I'm not really gonna go in depth in her version of the story because it's fake and it's trash. But obviously he was being abusive, he had thrown a phone at her face, he had spit on her, he had smashed this glass bottle and dragged her over the glass. And then she said that he had punched a wall and that's how he got the tip of his finger chopped off. We're gonna get into that later. But that's like a brief recap of her version of events. So obviously those have very specific injuries, right? I mean stuff like being choked or having a phone thrown at you don't always leave marks and injuries like that. But being dragged over glass is, it's pretty, you know, they're pretty specific injuries and I just find it a little bit suspicious how she's literally never been shown with any of those injuries. The only injury she's really been shown to have is a few cuts on her I believe left arm. Somebody said it was suspicious it was on her left arm considering she's right handed. I don't think that's suspicious. I just think, I mean, I think a lot of things are suspicious, but I don't think that's one of them. I guess I think she tried to get away with not having injuries by not really showing herself and like parts of her body and like staying well covered a couple weeks after the incident. But again, she was dragged over glass and she said that she had like injuries on her face. I believe she had like a black eye or something. She had like cuts all over her body, her arms, her like actual torso, her legs, everything. So why is it that only your left arm got scars and just a few scars? And somebody also pointed out that the scars looked very similar, like they were at the same depth. They were all like in a cluster in like one place. I mean, y you know, this half of her arm and all that. And when she finally did start showing like parts of her body, like her legs and like other parts of her arm and all that stuff, there were no cuts. There were no scars. There was no evidence that she had been dragged over glass like she said that she was. If you're dragged over glass, that's going to leave at least some scars over your body, right? Where were those scars? When Johnny Depp literally had a portion of his finger removed from his body, he had evidence of that. He showed him in the hospital. He had a picture of his finger before it was like put back, I guess. The only pictures we got from Amber Heard was of her after they had healed magically everywhere else except for this one part of her arm and literally nowhere else. In Johnny's version of events, she was the one who was shouting at him and spitting at him. She was the one who threw the wine bottle, which at first missed, but then she threw a larger vodka bottle, I believe, and that had smashed onto his finger where his hand was laying on the counter and it had severed the top of his finger off. That version of events adds up, you know, your, your hand was laying on the counter, then the bottle smashed it. What doesn't make sense is how you could punch something, this is how you punch, yeah? How you punch something and then this bit of your finger gets cut off. He's also got a cigarette burn, or at least he had for a very long time. I'm not sure if the scar has faded away now, but he has been seen with a scar on his face where Amber Heard had supposedly burnt him with a cigarette. Amber Heard's version of events is that he burnt himself with a cigarette that he was smoking himself. Who does that? So far, her version of events doesn't make sense because she has no scars to prove her injuries. Johnny has all his scars to prove his injuries. And Amber's version of events on how Johnny got hurt doesn't make sense. Not only that, but there have been recordings of her not admitting to it, but the events that had occurred after she had smashed the top of his finger off with the bottle. I'm gonna play a long recording. Um, you can skip it if you want to because it's not like her actually admitting to it. It's just her crying about why she did it, I guess. Dr. David Kipper and Nurse Debbie Lloyd. Ben was the estate manager for the couple's rented home while in Australia. Jerry Judge, who has since passed on, may he rest in peace. And it is very clear that he, at this point, was already familiar with Amber's tactics of manipulation. Thank you. 
Well, actually, it could be a tear, too. So, I just, so you know, I'm going to jump on it. I'm sure Nathan. I just want to hang. The majority of the light is downstairs, but I went through that really carefully. Oh, wait. Yeah. There's a. So I'm trying to figure something out. You know, I'm really concerned because he's got a lot of pain. A lot of pain? Pain. He's got a lot of pain also. We have to do something about it. But it's a very important thing to get back there. My reason, which maybe wrong, should be where all the blood is, and that's down there. Yeah, I'm going to take it. I'm going to go get some hands and I'll come back. I looked at it really carefully. Russ saw his desk down there. He, he couldn't see it. Okay. Couldn't find it. Oh. All right, Jerry. Not in the trash. In the end, it's my device. And we're going to take care of himself. We're going to take care of him. They can't be together now. It's going to come back. So, however, Andrew, I think you should be able to handle this with the person. And this act for us first. And this is not going to be okay. It's going to be two days. I think it's going to be two days. I mean, I know it's a, I don't need to validate what you're saying. No, but I'm just wondering if it's another person. Well, I, I asked the same question earlier. Yeah. All of those are back here. Yeah. For that reason, I think he's not going to be able to do this wrong guy. Yeah, is there a trash that has bandages in it? It works, yeah. Isn't it gone? Yes. Which I feel like it's a good person.
all the time we get out of ecstasy and I hate the thing basically. I hate the unknown that has to go you know, I hate the unknown element that really sets it off. I hate that Jerry, I don't want to do that. I really hate it. Here's my first book that I want to hear that. Well, I'm actually, I was trying to make that a very calm, rational point for us. I mean, I don't start to talk to you. No, it's hard to talk to us. Or you go walking there. They were starting to talk to me. They were actually in stuff. And then, of course, it just came out. I mean, you know, I don't think that's such a word. It's saying all the things. I feel so stupid, Jerry. I don't want to go over here and shift the thing. I feel so stupid. Sorry. I'm really calm. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, I'm telling you. Jerry? Uh, since we don't have the hotel yet. Um, what happened after all, you know, the smashed glass bottles and all that yummy stuff is also different. Johnny was hiding from Amber in the bathroom and she was banging on the door trying to push her way into the bathroom to get to him. While trying to close the door to stop her from assaulting him, she claims that the door scraped her toes. When Johnny bent down to check on her, she kicked the door into his head and then followed up with a punch to the jaw, all with no retaliation from Johnny. This deposition was less than one year after this audio of Amber confessing to be the violent and abusive one in their relationship. Keep in mind that in this 2016 sworn deposition and in her 2000 19 sworn declaration in her motion to dismiss the defamation suit against her, she testified she only ever hit Johnny one time. Make note of her body language. Did you commit domestic violence against Johnny Depp? Any time prior to May 22nd, 2016, did you ever commit an act of domestic violence against Johnny Depp? Calls for a legal conclusion and irrelevant. Do you understand what I'm asking you? No. No? Yes, I understand what you're asking. Okay. Is it your testimony that you never committed any act of what would be considered domestic violence against Mr. Depp? Calls for legal conclusion and irrelevant to these proceedings. I did my... I, uh, no, I did my best to defend myself and not... not, um, not, not get seriously hurt or be a doormat. Isn't it true that you had previously told Johnny Depp that you had hit him? I'm gonna object. It's a different question. Vague and ambiguous, Vegas to time. Many times when we fought, um, well, not many times. Uh, he hit me for a very long time before I ever um, I'm gonna picked up my arms. I'm going to non-responsive and move to strike. Ms. Hurd, I'd like you to listen to what I'm about to play. Would you do that? I then stood up. I don't even know if I said, I, mean, I might have said, like, what the fuck? Because I've just been hit in the head with the fucking corner of the door. I'm so sorry. I did not. I'm sorry. And then I stood up. Do you recognize the voices on that tape? Mm -hmm. And who are the people on that tape? It's Johnny and I. Is Johnny describing an act where you made a door go into his head? Mm. Objection, harassing, argumentative, vague. I, um, I was trying to escape from a room uh, where Johnny was attacking me. And in order to escape, I was trying to get onto the other side of the door, attempting to close the door, and he was attempting to get in despite my attempts to try and escape an assault. And then you fucking clock. I, I remember hitting you as a response to the door thing. Did you just tell Johnny Depp in that recording that I remember hitting you as a response to the door thing? Yes, as he was trying to get into the door, I was trying, into the room, I was trying to escape in. He pushed the door into me, and I was trying to hit him by getting, out of, by getting him out of the door to stay in the room. And you told him in that tape recording that you hit him, correct? Uh, I, don't, I, I don't know what words I used in that. You can play it back if you want, but I don't remember exactly how long. And I'm really sorry about hitting you with the door or, or hitting your head. I did. did you tell Johnny Depp at that time you were speaking to him that you were really sorry hitting him with the door, hitting him? I was, I think in that recording I made it very clear that I was sorry that the door hit him while he was trying to get into the room I was escaping or attempting to escape into. She wanted to paint a picture that she was fleeing from Johnny when in fact it was the other way around, lying about what was just played to her on the tape. It's not clear at all that she was trying to escape because it's not on the tape. Well, it's just it's a shitty lock. Any, anyway, I opened the bathroom door when we were knocking on it. After a few times I opened, you know, you just, come in, you just kept going, you just kept going, kept going. I tried to close the door three times, you know. He's, he's just doing, you know, and then wait, and then I, 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 I accidentally, I swear, when I was trying to close the door, 
I guess it scraped your toes, and I didn't, I, you know, I didn't mean to do that. And I bent down, and you either pushed or you kicked. I think you kicked the door open. I mean, so caught the door, get yeah, more open, so that it would I hit me. And it hit no, me. I, wait, I didn't wait. Mean to. Wait. I didn't know it that. Hit me in the fucking head. But I did not mean to do that. I, I, don't know what I was mean. bent down behind the door. I did not do anything to. I did not kick a, a door or push a door so that it would hit you. I did not. I, I swear, but I mean that did not. It was not my intention. I, I think I remember when the door scraped my toes, I... Okay. So you told him in that excerpt that you hit him with a door but did not intend to hit him, correct? The recording speaks for itself. Did you say that? I, I, I said whatever I said in that recording. Okay. I don't... Um, when you play it for me, it's hard for me to remember every... <clears throat> Are these from the same day? I, I, I reacted, but this whole... The door thing... I, I remember... I, I never did that. That wasn't on purpose. I might have done it on accident. Okay. But so let's say that was an accident. I then stood up. I'm so sorry. I did not. I'm sorry. And then I stood up. And then you fucking clocked me. I, I remember hitting you as a response to the door thing. And I'm really sorry about hitting you at the door or, or hitting your head. I did not mean to, nor... Uh, you didn't mean to hit me in the head with the door, but you meant to I didn't punch mean, me in the jaw. I meant to hit you, and I, I, I did not do this thing with the door. I, I do remember, I did mean to hit you. So that you didn't again. mean? The door? No, God, no, I didn't. I'm, but punch me in the, in the jaw. I didn't, did. okay, I'm sorry. So on the tape, you tell Johnny Depp that you did mean to hit him. Objection. That's argumentative, and it misstates what the recording was. And it also misrepresents, misrepresents okay. uh, what actually happened, which is him trying to get into a room. I'm trying to keep him out of it. And then he runs the door over my toes, trying to get into the room. I tried to push him out of it, which is what the hit is referred to. And Johnny, whenever he was injured or touched at all, was re referred to it in these ways of punching or clocked or whatever. And whether you discussed it with him or not, the last thing you do in, in talking to him afterwards or trying to reconcile with him is to get into what the definition of those words mean to him. Just say what so happened. I just never, I never even addressed it. He would, if he was ever pushed, it was, it was a cold, he called it a, a cold clock. I mean, it's just very dramatic. Isn't about it? Very dramatic. She just scoffed, smirked, and rolled her eyes at the idea of Johnny complaining about her abusing him. And that I that, lied! And that you punched me in the You're fucking right. thing and you, you figured in the off. face and you said, no, fuck it, I didn't, what the fuck are you talking about? And I, I watched punch you lie, you. and then I, I didn't punch you. And by the way, you. I'm sorry that I didn't uh, you, uh, uh, hit you me. across the face in a proper slap, but I was hitting you. It was not punching you, but you're not punched. Don't tell me what it feels like to be punched. You, you know, even a lot of guys have been around a long time. I know. Yeah, no, I when you fucking have a closed you fist. Get punched. You got hit. I'm sorry, I hit you like this, but I did not punch you. I did not fucking deck you. I fucking was hitting you. you can't I don't know what you. the motion of my actual hand was, but you're. Fine. I did not hurt you. I did not punch you. I was hitting you. How are your toes? How, what am I supposed to do? Do this? How are your toes? I, I'm not sitting here bitching about it, am I? You are. Oh, That's the difference you between me toes. and you. You're a fucking baby. Because you start you physical are fights? You're a baby! Because Grow you, the fuck up, Because you Johnny. start physical fights? I did start a physical fight. Yeah, you did. So I had because, to get the fuck out of there. Yes, you did. So you did the right thing. The big thing. The, you know what? You are admirable. Every single time. What, 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 what's your excuse when there's not a physical fight? Then what's the excuse there? You're still being admirable, right? Just by running away? True Truman has heard that in September of 2015, you punched Johnny Depp in the face with a closed fist. Mm. I, hit, I hit Johnny one time when he... Sorry, no, you answer the question. Please stop whispering because it's it's distracting over here. It's your team. team. I know. I was no these two. Actually, I can't hear them. I hear them. So please answer the question. Yes or no? Did you ever no. punch Johnny Depp with a closed fist in the history of your relationship with Johnny? Answer it however you feel you wish to. Thank you. One time, um, Johnny was hitting me, and he was hitting me hard and repeatedly, and I was screaming. Security walks in and they don't do anything about it. And there, he, 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 he makes this motion uh, when Jerry Judge yells, Fox, or uh, Sean, I can't remember who it was. And 
Um, and my all we had was a little bit of separation, and my sister runs down the stairs. Uh, it's a, we're on a landing in between two flights of stairs. Miss Hurd, I must interrupt you, you because can't. I've you asked can't. you a yes then or no withdraw question. Your, withdraw your question then because Ms. she's Heard, answering. Prior to today's date, have you ever hit Johnny Depp? I'm going to you You've already asked, and she's already answered, and you interrupted her. Ms. Hurd, have you ever hit Johnny Depp prior to today? Judge your biggest of times. Everyone on this side of the room, please. Objection 352. It's not relevant to this domestic violence pursuit. Overruled. <laughs> Thank you, Your Honor. Answer it however you want to, including the way you were just. If I'm you asking were. for a yes or no answer. You don't have to answer it the way she wants you to answer it. He was about to push my sister down the stairs. She was attempting to break us up. I am protective over my baby sister. When he laid hands on her, I don't know what I did. But I know I jumped in between the actions that I saw could lead to a fatal injury to my sister. She was standing on the top of a flight of the stairs, and she has never hurt anyone in her life, and she does not deserve to be pushed down the flight of stairs. And it looked like she was about to be. And I would have done what anybody who has a child or a sister would have done. I acted defensively in her life. I saw her standing on top of a flight of the stairs and trying to interrupt a fight in between him and I. I don't know what part of my body I, I put in between me and him and, and her, but I would have done anything. I would have done anything to prevent her from being pushed down a flight of stairs. She testified this story and incident was the only time she ever hit him. We know just from this video and the audio recordings, that's a huge lie. She has hit him multiple times as he attempted to run away from her. In Amber's testimony, she says Johnny was hitting her after he had toppled some of her clothing racks. After the alleged incident, the only evidence she submitted are text messages that Whitney sent to the estate manager, Kevin Murphy, in which they seemed to be trying to get a reaction out of him while sending photos. As you recall, Amber couldn't remember which security member showed up, Sean or Jerry. She was wrong on both counts. You remember Travis. He's the one Johnny would text for protection from Amber in her audio confession to which she had these things to say about him and Johnny. That After you fucking night. got physically violent with me, I texted Travis, I said, come up here, because I didn't want anything to happen. Me. I mean, yeah. Mm -hmm. what, come what, save me? No, go ahead, continue. You, 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 Travis, do the rescue. No, I'm not. Right, you have something you're holding on to about Travis. Fucking go, fucking, go fuck. You know, go do it. Go run away together. Fuck we'll talk guys. to Travis. I'm not fucking talking to nobody. No, fuck that. You fucking. go fucking jerk. Go jerk him off. I don't care. I really could care less. Travis has given testimony. He testified that on the morning of March 23rd, 2015, Johnny texted him to come to Penthouse 5 and bring the nurse Debbie. They witnessed Johnny and Amber having a verbal argument over Amber's suspicions about Johnny's involvement with another woman. He also testified that Whitney was present. Amber has pretty much been doing all the speaking for most of her so-called witnesses. Travis testified that about 30 to 45 minutes into the argument, he witnessed Amber throw a can of Red Bull that hit Johnny in the back, and then she spit on him. She also threw her purse at Johnny, but Travis was able to deflect it. Then he testified about 10 minutes before he left with Johnny, Amber punched Johnny in his eye with a closed fist. Isn't it true, Ms. Hurd, that prior to today you've committed domestic violence against your sister, Whitney Hurd? I'm going to object. Uh, don't answer that. It has nothing to do with these proceedings. Isn't it a fact, Ms. Hurd, that you've hit Johnny Depp on multiple occasions? prior to today's date. Objection 352. Okay, it's compound, it's been asked and answered. Isn't it a it, fact, Ms. Hurd, that on multiple occasions prior to today, you've hit Mr. Depp without any provocation? Same objection. Objection, Vegas the time, 352. No? No. Isn't it a fact, Ms. Hurd, that prior to today, you have slapped Mr. Depp on multiple occasions? Objection, Vegas the time, 352. We now know Amber has lied on multiple platforms about the abuse she committed and severe injuries she inflicted on Johnny as sworn testimony. So if Amber was this willing to lie on such a grand scale nearly four years ago when she wasn't facing real consequences for her actions as she was the one making the initial allegations, how much do you think she's willing to lie now? Also, there's nothing even hinting that Amber's actions were means of self-defense. There's just too much evidence and her own admission that says otherwise. So before this became like a whole court thing, there was like an event that kind of led to Amber's friends calling the police on Johnny. And this is basically how it went down. This is a recording of one of Amber Heard's friends calling the police about Johnny assaulting her. You'll hear in the recording, they wanted to remain anonymous. We don't know who this person is. They've tried to keep it secret and I'll get into that in a minute. Just remember that though. It's anonymous and they try to keep it secret. Hi, I need to report an assault right now happening at 849 Broadway at the Eastern Building 20, in Penthouse 20, 3. 7, okay, are you there right now, ma'am? No, I'm downstairs. Okay, and I'm sorry, 20, you said 840, 20, was it North or South Broadway? 47 uh, I don't know, it's the Eastern Building. 
downtown LA because it's coming up in different areas. I, I, we have to be sure. Um, somebody was being physically assaulted. Yeah. Seven seconds. Who? A woman. Who was hurting her? A man. Was that her boyfriend? I a man. That's all I know. Did you witness it? No, I happen to know that it's happening, Saturday, and I just need to May remain anonymous. 20, okay, you can remain anonymous, then, 000, but I have to be certain 16, what's going on. How do you know this is 20, going on, though? 20, uh, she told me. 20, oh, okay, so this is a friend seconds. of yours? Yes. Okay, so what did she say, that this guy was assaulted her or hit her? Physically assaulting her, yes. Okay, but this isn't a boyfriend or anything like that? Y- yes, it's... 20, it could 20, be, yeah. Okay, is it her boyfriend, yes or no? Seconds. Yes. Okay. All right, hold on. Are you between 8th and 9th Street in and downtown? Yes, yeah, exactly. Seven, okay, seconds. and I'm sorry, what was the suite number? Penthouse 3. Penthouse 3, okay. And 20, you want us to be anonymous, 20, right? Yes, and oh. zero seven seconds. And uh, your friend, did she relay this in? Information to you via text or were you 20, talking to her? 20, uh, nine and okay. 17 seconds. Saturday, What's her name? Her name is Amber. 2016, that's 20, all I can tell you. I have to go. And okay, well, if that's all we have seconds. and we can't talk to her, her there's not much we can do. We'll send <laughs> what do you mean there's... Send somebody up, please. I'm going to send someone uh, send someone up, ma'am, but, you know, if we get up there and she denies it or... 20, okay, 20, okay. 20, okay, okay. Nine okay and just so you know, 40, okay? So we're coming out to 840 Broadway... Penthouse 3, okay? So Amber's friend Io was the other person that called the police, not in the recording that I just showed you. But basically what Io had said is that they called the police immediately after Amber had told them that she was being abused by Johnny over the phone. And here are Io's phone records. So the recording that I showed you that was the person that remained anonymous, that was the phone record thing that they used in court instead of Io's call to the police. So obviously that's really suspicious. This phone call that they're trying to keep secret that they don't want anyone to know about, that was the one that they brought up in court instead of Io's phone call. Amber and her two friends, Io and I believe, what's her fucking name? Amber, Io and another friend of Amber's all testified in court, which means they lied in court. They testified that Io was the only person that made the phone call. That is obviously false. So this is from another friend of Amber's who said that they received a message from Amber at approximately 8.06 p.m. Amber was asking them to go over to her place, so they immediately went. The key word, immediately. They said it took under a minute to get a key and go in to check on Amber. This means they were there at around 8.07. So Amber calling IO, did I say this? But basically Amber called IO so that IO could call the police, which means that Amber calling IO and then IO then proceeding to call the police, that all had to have happened between 8.06 and 8.07. But phone records showed that his call to the police was at 8.16, like a solid 10 minutes after. So what we know is that there were two phone calls, one from an anonymous person, the second one from IO. Amber and her two friends all testified that there was only one 911 call and that was from IO. That is three lies under oath. Nobody testified about the anonymous phone call even though that was the one used in court. People think that the issue with Io's phone call and why there had to be a different phone call that they used in court was because Io gave specific details like Amber is being hurt by her husband, Amber is being hit with a phone at the face. I believe Io tweeted something about this phone call and the person that called was referred to as Lauren. So people actually did some digging and found out who Lauren is and she is like a real person. And Lauren lives in San Francisco. Aya's phone records show a call to San Francisco. Lauren lied about being at the building because she was actually watching Silence of the Lambs with some other friends. And this is what Incredibly Average had to say about it. Who I truly believe this mystery caller is, Raquel Pennington. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah. Amber, Amber, Amber. Two. Amber. A woman. A woman. Then there's the information that the caller was in the building, which we know Raquel was. Assuming it's Raquel means that she lied, claiming Amber told her over the phone she was being assaulted and not that she was there in person with Amber during or shortly after. Raquel testified Amber told her that she thinks Io called the cops because she yelled for him to do so. Raquel told Amber she would verify what Io did. This actually proves another lie told by Amber when she texts Johnny a few days later, telling him she didn't know why the cops came. But if she told Raquel that Io called the cops and Raquel verified that the cops were on the way, well that makes it a lie, doesn't it? She also claimed that's the only reason she called her divorce 
Iowa's attorney that night for guidance. According to Iowa's records, he called Io and just three minutes before the second mystery 911 call was made. There was no mention in this conversation about asking someone else to call 911. That's why Raquel had to pretend to be someone else and remain anonymous. If everyone found out she knew Io already called 911 but then still called 911 herself, well, it just adds more fuel to the hoax fire, in my opinion. Phone calls were also made to Amber's publicist, Jody Gottlieb, and her makeup artist, Melanie Inglesis. After Johnny left Penthouse 3, Amber, Raquel, and Josh all gathered in Penthouse 1. Amber had just been told Johnny wanted a divorce, and she was angry and panicking. She gets on the phone with Samantha Spector, who guided her and her friends through what needed to happen next in order to get the upper hand in the impending divorce, calling the police, but with what details? From here, Raquel was instructed, likely by Amber with the guidance of her lawyer, to call in an attempt to undo the details given by Io and keep it vague and simple. Raquel doesn't seem urgent, like she's saving a life, but rather annoyed that she has to cover up Io's potential mistake by saying she would like to report an assault that's happening. While on the phone with Amber's lawyer, the group was not only advised on what to do about the police, but also each were instructed to write down what they said happened, so this could later be applied to potential declarations. This writing was something Raquel claimed she likely still had when she sat for the first half of her deposition in June 2016. But then, shucks, wouldn't you know it, couldn't find it to show them when she came back for the second half of her deposition in July. Josh Drew was actually waiting in the hall to greet them and tell them it's all under control and send them on their way without seeing Amber because, remember, details are hard to fake, but at least they could say that the police had to show up because of assault. When they insisted on seeing Amber, Josh went into Penthouse 1, leaving the police officers outside. The officers could hear talking going on behind the door. They knocked multiple times and insisted that Amber come out. They weren't going away. Amber, while on the phone with her lawyer, was told she would have to talk to them, but was told to not give a statement, again because details. The domestic violence trained police officers saw no evidence of a crime nor any injuries to Amber and have since testified to that. And that would have thrown a wrench into their plans to get the DVRO, $50,000 a month, and Johnny's penthouses they lived in. They needed something official, but not too detailed, and certainly not something that could contradict their claims, and they knew exactly where to get it. That's why they used the second call to 911 and not IOs as their proof that an assault was recorded and responded to that night. So already there, is, there are so many inconsistencies, there is so much more. If you want to do your own research on it, I encourage you to do so because it's so messy. So the last little bit that I want to kind of talk about is Amber Heard's ex-girlfriend and how she had supposedly abused her as well. So in 2009, Amber was arrested at the airport and reportedly she was booked for domestic violence by her ex-girlfriend, Tasia Van Rie. In a document received by Daily Mail, Johnny Depp's court statement read, several women who have been in a relationship with Miss Heard have come forward to share their personal experiences of brutal violence and other abuse at the hands of Miss Heard. My advisors have and continue to interview these victims who remain deeply fearful of Miss Heard and to collect evidence from these victims. The actor also claimed that Amber Heard does all of it under the influence of drugs while mixing prescription amphetamines and non-prescription drugs with alcohol. Miss Heard committed innumerable acts of domestic violence against me, often in the presence of third party witnesses, in which some instances caused me serious bodily injury. Multiple of these commissions of violence against me, she has even admitted to under oath. This is another part of Johnny's story that she would take and make it her own. She would say that Johnny would be drunk or high when he was abusing her. She even said that in one instance he had been on like a massive drug binge, I think either a day or just a couple days before he had abused her in the instance where he had like dragged her over glass and all that. But obviously he had severed his finger and when he went to the hospital to get it fixed, there were medical records of things that he was given, like pain relievers and stuff like that. There was nothing remotely related to anything regarding the drugs or the alcohol that he had supposedly taken. But anyway, Van Rie came out out to say Amber actually didn't assault her at the airport and that she was also wrongfully accused and that the incident was over sensationalized. I recount hints of misogynistic attitudes towards us which later appeared to be homophobic when they found out we were domestic partners and not just friends. Charges were quickly dropped and she was released moments later. So that incident supposedly wasn't actually Amber abusing. I'm not saying that she abused Tasia Van Rie in any way. I'm just saying this is what my brain kind of did when I found out about this. Amber and her friends lied and continue to lie and do anything they can to protect Amber. Johnny Depp when he was first experiencing abuse and all that stuff from Amber, lied about his injuries and how he got them in order to protect Amber. So I don't think it's too far-fetched that this ex-girlfriend of hers would have been manipulated in order to protect Amber. Do I personally believe that Amber abused Tasia Van Rie? I don't know. I don't necessarily think so. But that doesn't mean she didn't abuse Johnny. She also said, this is another piece of like evidence, she was asking Johnny Depp, do you ever get so mad that you just lose it? And Johnny said, no. 
He said no. And then Amber, refusing the answer, asked again. Jody again said no. And then she said, well, I sometimes get so mad that I just lose it. So she admitted in that recording that she has issues with her anger and that she can lose it, which in this situation, I could only interpret as her being physically abusive or emotionally abusive towards her partners or whoever she's getting mad at. Johnny Depp's previous partners have also come out to say that he has never ever been abusive towards them, one of which he was in a relationship with for about 14 years. I'm just so baffled as to how she's had nothing, like no prison time whatsoever. Is none of her lying suspicious to them? So a couple of comments I screenshotted include, I hate how so many people are standing up for her because she's a woman. Amber Heard, what about my reputation? My career is never going to recover from this. Johnny Depp, what about my son? His college friends are asking him if his father is a wife beater. Speaking of priorities. So yeah, that's all I have for you guys today. If you liked this video or if you liked me, well, first of all, you could go to Incredibly Average because that's where I got all my information. But you could also like and subscribe. If you didn't like me, get in contact with my teachers because I bet you'll have a lot in common. And remember to stay safe and stay hydrated.